Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco. I hope you're doing well. If this is your first visit here, then welcome. And if you've been before, welcome back. What we're going to be doing in this Daz tutorial video is the first of a, a series of videos that I'm going to do where I'm looking at different lighting setups that we might use, different lighting setups for different situations, for different environments and, and images that maybe we want to create. And what I'm talking about in this instance is, you know, outdoor shots in daylight and sunlight or indoor shots or nighttime shots, things like that, different type of images that, that we might want to do. And in this video, what we're going to look at, we're going to look at probably one of the simplest of them all which is the the studio lighting setup that we might get you might see it in a, a promo image on a you know on the Daz store or something or you know something similar to what a photographer would do in a studio environment now over here we've got our model uh, all dressed up in some sexy lingerie uh, that something that we might find in a, a photo shoot somewhere that we're doing and you're just in a very basic studio there's just a white background over there and a white floor even though it looks black in the viewport there if we would just come over into the the render settings briefly and have a look at the environment tab we can see that i've got it set up just as scene only so that means the only lighting that's going to exist in this scene are the lights that we put in there spotlights point lights etc etc that we might want to do there's no ambient light and no background lighting so if i just come across to nvidia ira everything is black because there's no lighting in the scene at the moment now when we create any image whether it be outdoors or indoors or you know whatever it may be we always want to try and stick to the principles of the three-point lighting system as, as best we can we can maybe not be so strict in certain images like outdoors or nighttime and things like that but certainly in the studio environment that we've got here we want to try and stick to that three-point lighting system we need a key light a fill light and a rim light of some description and certainly when we don't have any ambient light uh, that will be lighted up our scene such as a HDRI or anything I have touched three point lighting systems before on this channel but for completeness sakes because we're going to start off with a studio shoot we're going to be using the three point lighting system again and just you know refresh us on on what it is and how to set one up and so the first light that we're going to introduce into our scene is the key light and the key light is our main light that's going to light up our model and so it needs to be the brightest light in the scene and so what I'm going to do I'm going to come across to perspective view for a moment with our camera and I'm going to position roughly where I want our key light to be now we want to be lighting up this side of her, her face and her body so we're going to want the key light somewhere in this position and then I'm going to come up to the create menu come down to new spotlight and on the dialog window that opens up, I'm going to apply the active viewport transform so it places the, the light that I'm putting in at the, the position of our perspective camera that we're looking through. And I'm going to click accept. And there we can see that it's inserted the spotlight up in the scenery tab. And that's roughly where we're going to be shining it. So now if I come back to our camera and then switch to NVIDIA iRay so we can see the effects of that spotlight, we can see we've now got this dim light lighten up our models great but not great enough you know we want it to be a lot brighter than that so again we make sure we've got our spotlight selected come down to lights and then in the settings that we get we want to increase the luminous flux lumen i'm not going to be any scientific about it i'm just going to add an extra zero on there to see what we get brighter but maybe not bright enough yet so again i'll just add another zero on now we're probably too bright but i'm okay with that for now because what we need to do is we need to soften all this light down it's a harsh light and there's harsh shadows and so we need to get rid of that and we do that by coming into the light geometry turn it over to a rectangle for instance you could go with any shape and then in the height and width we're going to just put in a hundred on each so that we now get a little bit more of a, an even light uh softer shadows with soft edges and to begin with to start off with that's not too bad uh, maybe i want to change the angle of the light so i'll just play around with it a little bit just to get it exactly how i want it to be so what i've done is i've just had a little play around with the spotlight just to get it to, to where exactly want to be it took me a couple of minutes there's no point you, you're seeing that and you can see now as i'm looking through the spotlight as a camera i've raised it up a little bit and given it a little bit more of a downward angle and the reason for that, if I come back to my camera and back to NVIDIA iRate, the, the reason I've changed the angle of the light in such so just now what I wanted to achieve with this is this little 
triangular shape of light that we can see under a right eye uh you know formed by the shadows that, that it's being cast on a face so we've just got this bit of light there uh, and this is known as rembrandt light and this was developed by the Ooh, what the 17th century Dutch artist Rembrandt who started to use this type of lighting in a lot of his paintings so that then is our key light in place and if I, I just come up to the, the key light there just give it a double click and we'll just call it key light so we've got it in place so now what we need in this three-point lighting system is we need our fill light and the fill light is there to just to control the shadows on the opposite side of the face from where the key light is shining so we're going to be wanting to position a fill light on this side just to control these shadows that there could be okay but we just want to control these shadows on this side of the face and so again what we need to do if i just come out of nvidia irate if we come over to our perspective view and just spin it around a little bit come across over here and we want to position the light in this area like i say because we just want to control the depth of the shadows around here and once we do that in a rough position we come up to create spotlight again we'll use the active transform to to in place it where the perspective camera is and then again before we even add any light and we'll just come down to lights and we'll come down to uh, our geometry to create a rectangle of 100 centimeters or one meter that would be in size just shining down on this side of our model and again we come back now to our camera and back onto nvidia irate and what we have now with this fill light is we have control of the shadows and the depth of the shadow on the left hand side of our image or the right hand side of our model so for instance if we were to come now down to luminosity or luminous flux and add a zero on there you can see how we've taken away a lot of the the shadow on the face we're still brighter on this side because our key light and is on that side and the key light should always be brighter than the the fill light uh but we've we've taken a lot of the shadow away we've still got that little triangle just if you squint and, and get a little bit close to your screen so maybe we're a bit too bright there to be fair i'm actually okay with the base the default so if i go into 1500 go back to what we were i don't mind this little darker shading that we've got on this side of a uh, face and a body uh one thing to bear in mind with your fill light you should never make it as bright or certainly not brighter than your key light otherwise your fill light will become your key light and your key light will become your fill light so you always want to control the shadows yes but never make your fill light to be brighter than your key light so but i'm okay with that i'm okay with the way that it stands and the way that it is uh, just at the base values that we had and what we'll do again we'll just give it a click and we'll just call it our fill light so we don't get confused moving forward and so now the third light that we want to put into this is known as the rim light and the rim light sits behind our model uh, and lights up uh, the back side of a the head or the, the back of a body etc and what it does it helps separate her out from the background a little bit by creating this little light halo around the body uh, and so what we want to do then is we want to come back into perspective view and again i'll just come out a texture so that we're not jumping around as we scroll uh, and spin around so we want to come around behind our model something like this in this position and what we're going to do we're just going to shine a, a spotlight right at the back of a head so if i come up again to create spotlights and again we'll place it where our perspective camera is looking and we get the light there and now again we'll come back around to our camera and then once more turn our light into a rectangle that's 100 by 100 you don't always have to do this with the rim light because it's not really casting any shadows but uh turn it into 100 by 100 and now come up and turn back nvidia iray on now in this situation as you can see we can see the, the the actual rectangular light back there so we can do what photographers can't do and we can come down to render emitter and turn that off so that we've now got the light shining on the back of her head now it's not doing anything because we have to up the luminosity so we'll just add a zero and again nothing scientific about this uh, add a zero onto it you can just see it highlighting the back of her hair there give it another zero see what that does and we can see now that her hair is got a lovely little highlight on it as the lights is shining through it and we've also got this nice little highlight on her shoulder there again just making her stand out a little bit from the background behind her 
Now that could be it. We could leave it at that. Uh, we've lit our model up with the three point lighting system. We've got our key light, our fill light. And if we rename this spotlight to rim, we've now got a rim light in there. All the elements of a three point lighting system that you would use in a photo type of studio. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to light up the background as well over here. And I've done that just by dropping a point light in just way over here somewhere uh, outside the viewport just to brighten up the entire environment. And there we have it. We've got a little photo studio set up using the three point lighting system and there is our finished render. Uh, I hope you've got something out of this video. Uh, in the future videos, like I say, we'll be looking at outdoor lighting, indoor lighting, nighttime lighting, all various different things and going through uh, what we need to be doing to get our images in the way that we want them to be. So if you've got something out of this video, then hit the like button down below. Really appreciate it as it tells YouTube that I'm a better YouTuber than what I actually am. Uh, also as well if you're not already please consider subscribing and hitting the little notification bell down below and if you've got any questions uh, or any comments whatsoever about this video or anything with Daz just drop them down below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can so there we have it thanks for watching bye bye now